And we are back. Thank you for joining us. Uh, now we're going to have our second interview of the evening here at InfoWars Nightly News with Charlotte Iserby. Charlotte Thompson Iserby, who, of course, uh, wrote the first phone book size uh, book, Deliberate Dumbing Down of America. She's now released, that's out of print, a uh, revised and updated edition that I should add is still very lengthy, but uh, absolutely essential for any educator or parent to understand what's really happening from the inside. She, of course, was number two at the Department of Education, the head of policy, and her father and grandfather were also members of Skull and Bones. And her original uh, information that was linked to Anthony Sutton is what blew that order wide open. And uh, we, of course, have premiered those in-depth interviews here for PrisonPlanet.tv viewers. But tonight, she's got new breaking news and analysis on education or the brainwashing. Uh, in fact, later we should queue up the attorney general saying he met with the media to, to, to brainwash the public against guns. There, there's video of this. This is their whole world view. This is a process of brainwashing. If the public seems totally dumbed down, many of them, it's a process. It's also not just educational. It's chemical to the fluoride, all of it. And now those documents have been released. So just amazing information beginning to unfold. But first, because her book gets into this, she talked about this in the 80s, and Ronald Reagan basically showed her the door, that there was a plan to basically end the family as we know it. She's got the quotes where they call it a disease inside government, and to slowly get it to where the parents just have the children when they're taken like eggs from a hen by the state. Communists tried this. Hitler tried this. This is the real authoritarian model. Now, they're targeting the farms under Agenda 21. Big Pharma and Big Agra write the laws that they're exempt from to try to shut down the family farms. Now, Obama has come out and set a rule, not a law, but a rule. He's going to ban anybody under 18 on their parents' farm. It's going to kill the family farm. It's going to kill that tradition. It, I mean, it literally breaks its back. He's saying, as we covered last night, and we've shown you these articles, he is openly saying a rule, dictatorially, that you will not be allowed to do chores, any of it, getting eggs, dealing with any raw materials, uh, dealing with anything. It's over. This is the incredible takeover of our society. So I wanted to bring that up and get Charlotte's take on it. We're about to go to her. And also, California passes a law. They can pass laws. They can kill you for no reason. doesn't make it constitutional. That they can get consent from you know, 10, 11-year-olds to get Gardasil vaccines or abortions without parents. Well, can a pedophile get consent from a 10-year-old girl to have sex with him? No, even if he tricks them to say yes, they're not of the age of consent. Well, now the state's saying we're taking kids' DNA nationwide. Come in and go and give us your DNA. And if the five-year-old gives consent, the police are saying it's okay because parents don't count. This is incredible. This is the state destroying parenthood in front of our eyes. So talk about vindicated. Charlotte Iserby has been vindicated from her stand in the 80s and her tireless fight in the last 30 years. And she joins us as an internal whistleblower uh, who has really slowed down their agenda. But now they just don't care if it's out in the open. They're rampaging forward. Charlotte, there's my opening analysis. I want your take on this attack on parenthood, the farms, all of it. I know I've talked about it, but I want you to go over it and then tie it into the overall Pavlovian dog training uh, and uh, break it down for us, uh, the, the, the new information. Uh, Alex, uh, what we're looking at now, it's, it's sad. We're, we seem to be, to have arrived at that 50 year period, certainly, it's more like 100, but major change agents say it takes 50 years for the beginning of change, you know, the agenda, setting of an agenda, and implementation. And uh, what we're really, really looking at is uh, going back to uh, 1965, the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. Uh, and the purpose of that act, in a few words, was to change education from, accurate, uh, from academics, uh, where children have upward mobility, they study the arts and the sciences and music, etc., to performance-based which is what's going in right now all over the country. And it's been called different names through the years. Started out being called Mastery Learning. They experimented in all the inner city schools with the Skinner Method. And that's why the, the deplorable test scores for the inner city schools. They started that in 1968. And people just never seem to figure it out that 
they weren't looking for academic results. They didn't care about the inner city kids going down the tubes. They were changing the system. They were changing it to a system which is going to be implemented right now through school choice, charter schools, and it's been set up ever since Carnegie Corporation in 1934 called for it. In its uh, conclusions and recommendations for the social studies, Carnegie in 1934 called for this system. You do away with grades, A, B, C, D, E, F. You do away with kindergarten through 12th grade. It's continuous progress. There's no competition. And a child can graduate at uh, age uh, 12 or 21. This is a new system. This is, all right, I think your audience can probably fill in the blank there. This is the Soviet education system. If you compare their system to what we're putting in now, no competition, right? The Soviets don't like, companies don't like competition. This is the school-to-work agenda where they identify the children at an early age, what they're going to be doing for the rest of their life, womb through tomb. Now, everything that goes on in our lives is going to be the Chinese system modeled on the Russian under the umbrella of the unelected school district. All these documents are in my book. Now, unfortunately, what we have happening here is the neoconservative movement, which has its roots in Trotskyism, is supporting this. They're supporting school choice. They're supporting charter schools. And it's understandable that people would go along with it because the schools were deliberately dumbed down to such an extent that people will accept any solution, even the loss of representative government, which is unelected boards to run the charter schools. All right, let me stop you for a moment. And, and I should also add that you still agree to this interview because you care about this so much. And there's been some new development with this charter schools. That's the breaking news. And you also are sick and under the weather, but you're still doing it because of that. And we appreciate you. And by the way, you're doing a great job. But I want to just back up what you're saying. They're, they've first banned dodgeball, now running and tag, now running period at recess. Now they're getting rid, they're saying get rid of valedictorian. So everything you talked about 30 years ago, people said that's crazy, even though you had the documents. You didn't have the Internet to expose it to everybody at the time. You, you were just trying to warn them. Now that's out. Then you bring up the fact about getting rid of representative government. Now we're being told get rid of it, and Obama's saying he can't wait to be reelected to do whatever he wants and ignore Congress. But then Mitt Romney is run by the very same people, and now they've admitted what you said months ago. Ron Paul did win Maine, did win Iowa, but the Republicans won't just count it. I mean, it's just we're seeing total. Th Why are they accelerating so fast right now? They don't want you to get back into the heart of this charter schools. Well, uh, let me get back to this because it's really very interesting how they, it's a repeat performance, it's constant. And uh, this hype over the schools, the schools we all know are off. I mean, I've written about it. Why? Why does Israel write 750 pages about the deliberate dumbing down of America if she isn't concerned about the quality of education? However, I'll tell you one thing. I'd rather stick with the system that we have right now then accept this new system. You see, what they do is they make it so bad, people will accept anything. Then accept this new system that now, interestingly enough, not just the neoconservatives and all these, these uh, conservative groups out there at pushing for charter schools with their unelected school boards, charter schools are required for workforce training. Obviously, if you had an elected school board, even the dumb ones, they are not going to vote to turn the academic system over to workforce training to spin off profits for the corporate fascists. They're not going to do that. So you have to get rid of the elected school boards. And this has been in the works for a long time. I have a long document in my book by Lou Vern Cunningham in 1980s. He was in Kentucky when David Hornbeck from Carnegie was destroying the schools down there, Lou Vernon Cunningham spelled out very clearly, we have to get rid of elected school boards. 
Okay, well, they're getting rid of them now. We have legislation in Maine. Luckily, the mayor, the legislature did, uh, they, t- they turned this down, the school choice one. The school choice legislation supported by our so-called conservative governor would have funded with tax money charter schools, religious schools, private schools, and homeschoolers. Scary as the dickens. Now, remember, folks, any school to work legislation that you have, which is all the opera conditioning, teaching the global values, getting the Baldridge Award. If you're a good school, you got the TQM Baldridge Award. No grades, uh, no uh, a, you know, kindergarten through 12th grade, no ABCD. I've mentioned that before. This is the Soviet system. This is the system that they're putting in right now, and the conservatives. Love it. Now, the reason I ask for you, please buy my new abridged, updated version of the book, is that the update, which is the first chapter, has all the information you need in it, about 15 pages, of what is going on now and how they're going to use school choice to, to, to implement our, uh, the unelected Soviet system in this country. Okay, now don't forget, uh, Norman Dodd was told in 1953 by Raoul Gaither of the Ford Foundation when they were doing the uh, investigation of the tax exempt foundations, he was told that uh, the, the foundation's agenda was determined by the White House. And that agenda was to use their money, the foundation money, uh, to change America so that it could be comfortably merged with the Soviet Union. Let me stop that- you again. Let me stop because we need to have an interchange on this. Today they've announced Russian troops training to take on, quote, American terrorists, mainstream media. Suddenly Russia was our enemy. Now they're our buddy. And look at this. I want to talk about this because you're talking about this, this incremental thing. We want to stay in the current bad system because they were meant to wreck the new system, which is really the old system, to bring us into the new system. The first few pages of your book from 1983 briefly tell folks the story of how they go from Little Frog Lick Creek High School to Kidney Bean Township, something that just sounds reasonable, to Greater Corn County HS, to Central State Educational Facility. This is Agenda 21, b- before they even pass that. Big Brother National Information Distribution Center. He's all ha- hateful now. Now they have the FEMA Corps, Imperial Interplanetary Propaganda System, Our Lady of Benevolent Dictatorship, One World Global Training Corps, and it ends with Interplanetary Carbon Unit, which we now hear carbon taxes. Tell us about this person that did this cartoon, because in 83, they had the full plan. These terms weren't even introduced yet. I'm very glad you brought this up, Alex, because just today, uh, I think some of your listeners have heard about the Council on Foreign Relations latest book on the need for educational reform. Well, this is, this is just over. It just keeps happening. It, it, you know, it's the dialectic. If you gradualism. if you want to get something, you have to create hysterics, panic, everything else, telling the American people everything's falling apart, and then you move in with a new agenda. Now, let me point out, you just mentioned 1983, very interesting tone. I was in the office in the Department of Education that carried out the agenda, the nation at risk. Remember that? That report, a nation at risk that said that a rising tide of mediocrity and if a, if a foreign war, a foreign country did this to us, we would consider it an act of war because the schools were so rotten. Huh? Well, okay, what happened? At that point, that's why I saw all of this. It's all in my book. Terrell Bell, all the quotes, what they were doing. They had to create the crisis, pretend it. There was a crisis. There wasn't. In 1983, our schools were really still pretty damn good. Excuse my language. And But they told everybody they weren't so that they could switch from the brain-based academic system to the Pavlovian system for the school-to-work agenda. To, to so that we'd be preparing, our children would be trained, not educated, for the global system going in right now. So that's what happened. They put the Skinner method in across the board. They've already experimented with all the minorities since 1960, 
I, I have a good article on my website called Experimentation on Minorities. That's why the minority kits, not completely, but that is certainly the major reason they had the declining test scores in the inner cities, because they used the Skinner method. They don't care about the test scores, academic. Forget it. They haven't cared about those test scores since 1934, when the Carnegie Corporation called for using the schools to change America from a free market system to a planned economy in the new order. That, that, that is a marvelous little book. It's on my son's website, americandeception.com. It's also included in my book, Deliver Dumbing Down. The proof is there. Carnegie continually, every five years, put money into testing, into the Education Commission of the States, into the National Assessment, into the, the Carnegie-Soviet uh, Academy of Science Agreement. Uh, can you imagine developing software for the computer in critical thinking for elementary school children? Well, just you better be scared, folks, okay? That was when Reagan did the same thing. So in the 80s, sorry to have to say this, this was when the major change took place. They created a phony problem. They implemented the solution, changing the method to Skinner, uh, getting rid of grades, getting rid of K through 12, continuous progress. All of this, the schools right now, I'm going to give you something to look up on the internet, look up the Reinventing Schools Coalition on the internet. And you will see that is the model. That model, David Roger of the Washington Post wrote it up eight years ago in the Washington Post, and he said the kids are graduating at 14 or 21. And the schools that do a good job with this total quality management, non-academic stuff, Skinner, get the Baldrige Award. Now, the Baldrige Award is given to corporations such as Cadillac, and you name what, okay? Is your child a car? Now, I often use the Skinner, you know, the, the uh, C.S. Lewis quote, uh, when, when training beats education, which is what's happening, civilization dies. Okay, now, today I see CFR. I've got the reports in the mail. Educational decline is a national security threat. Now, folks, you know what that CFR stands for? Okay, neocons out there. Okay, all you leadership in the conservative movement and the media, what is the CFR to you? I think it's the Council for Foreign Relations, isn't it? All right. Well, they're jumping on board with you, you Trotskyite neocons. They're jumping on board. I'm going to read this. The fact that government is... This way right here. Uh, here's an excerpt from this report. Educational future... The educational failure, excuse me, puts the United States' future economic prosperity, global position, and fiscal safety at risk, warns the task force, chaired by Joel Klein, former head of New York City Public Schools, and Condoleezza Rice, former U.S. Secretary of State. Quote, the country will not be able to keep pace, much less lead, globally, unless it moves to fix the problems it has allowed to fester for too long, argues the task force. It goes on. Now, look. This sounds just like in 1983, in my office, the nation at risk. So they just keep creating the problem, test scores go down, keep getting worse and worse and worse, until finally they're going to get the American people to say, and I've heard Americans say this, good people with brains. Well, Charlie, you know, maybe we ought to try the charter school idea, with, even though it's on elected boards. Well, let me stop you there, because I want to go back to this. It was, it was like a decade ago you told me the story of this, because now having my knowledge of this and watching it played out, uh, it says uh, copyright P-E-T-T, -T, Kappen. And if I remember correctly, you were saying this was a joke in the Department of Education, because only the, uh, 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 but correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm going from like 10 years of memory, only an insider could have done this because it's 1950 Little Frog Creek High School. Then they just train you. Let's just change the name. It's reasonable. Let us change things. Kidney Bean Township, still a happy kid. Now it's Greater Corn County HS. He's still happy, but not as much. Now he's mean. Central State Education Facility, more books. You know, designing to not do the basics, to screw the kids up, and to break them into subgroups either high achievers or everybody else failing. Then we move from 2000 into 2012, Big Brother, 
National Information Distribution Center. This is in 83, folks. 2015, going to the future. Imperial Interplanetary Propaganda System. Then it's Total Shaved Head. Our Lady of the Benevolent Dictatorship One World Global Training Corps. And then pretty soon it's the happy little menu with headphones, which means CIA brainwashing. They did that interplanetary carbon unit, the carbon tax. This is actually when they get everybody ready for the mass reduction with the bioweapons from the Rockefeller Foundation documents. So the point is, this is a process for mass culling. This is a total master plan. Now, because I remember you told the story of this, and I'm going from like 10, 12-year memory. You haven't told it on my show since then. What was the story of this particular uh, intro to your book from 1983, uh, because if memory serves, again, you were saying they were making jokes in the Department of Education about this. Well, no, not really. What happened is that after I was retired huh, from my job for leaking the documents, uh, I went home and, and I was, uh, I used to get, uh, what's it called, educational leadership. It's, it's the publication of the Association Educational Research and Improvement, and they had this cartoon in there. I think it's 1985, and I looked at it, and that particular journal was very liberal. I mean, they're into all this critical thinking, garbage, Skinner, everything. You know, and occasionally there might be an article that I, you could, right, was you know, relate to a bit. But I looked at this cartoon, and I thought, whoa, whoa, what? You know, because at that time. None of us were really thinking that forward, huh? And I thought, what's that doing in this journal? So I kept it. I clipped it. I kept it carefully. Always. Always remembered it. Then came along 1999, when we were publishing The Big Baby here. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so in 1999, I thought, I'm going to put that in this book, because that's an extraordinary cartoon. And I called... I called educational leadership and I asked them, or Phi Delta Kappen, I think it was Phi Delta Kappen, and I, I said, can I, how can I contact Joel Pat, the, the uh, cartoonist? And they said he doesn't work for us anymore, uh, but he's working for uh, a, a very important newspaper in Kentucky. And I called him and I, I said, I really love this cartoon. And he said, I, you still have that? He said, it's one of my favorites. I lost it. I said, well, I hold on to it, and I wish that I could use it. He said, send it to me. I'll fix it up, you know, get the line stronger, and this, that. And I did, and he did, and he, he virtually gave it to me. I've never understood the reason why they allowed that in there. It's absolutely marvelous. As you know, Alex would put it in the front of the book, add it in the back of the book. But anyway, what I want to say here is that I, we were talking about a nation at risk. 1983, when that, you know, that big bad wagon across the country and telling us all the, the schools were failing, we had to make so many changes, which was all Skinner that they were putting in. But anyway, this is a very interesting article here. In 1990, and I'd heard about this before, but I never got this Sandia report. I knew that it was important because the report said that the nation at risk uh, statistics were, were incorrect. So let me read this. It says, in 1990, I got this off the internet, Wikipedia, I think, uh, regarding nature risk. Admiral James Watkins, the Secretary of Energy, commissioned the Sandia Labs in New Mexico to document the decline in the nation at risk report with actual data. When the system scientists broke down the SAT test scores into subgroups, they discovered contradictory data. While the overall average scores declined, the subgroups of students increased. In statistics, this is known as Simpson's paradox. Now, the three authors presented their report. Uh, David Carnes uh, allegedly told the authors of the Sandia report, quote, David Carnes, by the way, was Xerox, the head of Xerox, and later went to work for George Bush, the Department of Ed. Uh, David Akar said, allegedly told the authors of the report, quote, and get this, folks, you bury this or I'll bury you. Okay, so that Nation at Risk report was a farce. It was just to get us moving more and more towards this non-academic, 
system that I've outlined for you. And if you just go on the internet, type in Reinventing Schools Coalition, and you will find out what your children and grandchildren are going to have in the future. That is the model. They're putting it into Maine. They, can you imagine, Alex? It just so happens that they put it into this tiny little school where I live. And I was able to go over and listen to the facilitator presenting this. No grades. You can graduate, as David Broder said in the Washington Post, at 14 or 21. No ABCD. Continuous progress. This is the system that the Baldrige, you know, the Malcolm Baldrige Total Quality Management Award given to the best functioning corporations gets. Folks, you really consider your child as a car? Is that what you really want to have done to your child? You want your child to be trained as workers are who put cars together? Or you want what C.S. Lewis says you should have in order to preserve civilization? Education. You don't want this training. And if any of you people who think that school choice is a good idea continue to think this after this interview, I plead with you to get my book, the updated version, and maybe the older book that's more expensive because all the documents showing the, the involvement of these people, I really could be very rude in describing them. These are conservatives who are, believe it or not, maybe I'm just naive or something, they are responsible basically for putting in this corporate, fascist, socialist, communist system. And once it's in, in education, with elected councils, non-elected non councils, no representation for you, although you pay taxes, once it's in, what's to keep all the other elected boards from becoming non-elected? We are moving, and I know the gals and guys out in California are fighting, you know, Agenda 21. Congratulations to them, Rose, the whole crowd, Michael Shaw, you name them. Uh, they know what's happening. Uh, maybe because they're closer to China, they can see it better than most of our, our people. But, we're, you know, really, to me, I'm even shocked that I believe that we are implementing right now what Norman Dodd was told by Rowan Gaither. We're putting in the Soviet system here. And Americans don't see it, but, you know, I have a funny little statement, Alex, that I, I've been telling people lately. Maybe you want, maybe your people won't think it's so funny. But, you know, when you go to people and you explain to them, you have all the documentation, you say, look, read this. You know, one and one is two, right? Well, no, it's not anymore, is it? And uh, you show them everything, and they look at you like, I mean, where are you from? What planet did you come from, Charlotte? Well, you know what I compared this with? The guy has been very ill, doesn't know what's wrong with him. And finally, his doctor does an MRI. And he calls him in, and they put it up on the screen. And his back is riddled with cancer. And the guy just looks at the doctor, and he's like these people with the blank stares, and says, oh, I'm Oh, gee whiz, that's interesting. Well, thanks, Doc. Goodbye. Well, Charlotte, uh, looking at this, it just shows us how crazy things have gotten. Let me ask you this question. Why are things accelerating so fast now? And then I should add, people can't go to Infowars.com and get the books that are discounted there on the site, and it supports the radio show and what you're doing, what everybody's doing. It gets a free citizen rule book when they do order at Infowars.com, and then give it to educators. If they can't do that, it's fine, because you, on your website and also on your son's website, you have posted the original Big Thick book online for free, along with documents that the globalists have fought to suppress. So why don't you tell people, A, why are they moving so fast right now, if you agree with that statement? Just, to, I mean, the whole agenda's out in the open. And then B, tell folks about the free online copy of Deliberate Dumbing Down. Okay, Alice, I, I'm not trying to compliment you, but I think that it's because they're moving fast because a very small minority of us are moving fast too, led by you. 
uh, not very many of us. Believe it or not, I think that they really are not, they really are slightly disturbed with us. And I, as I said in the last interview I had with you, uh, we wouldn't be speaking today. You and I, you wouldn't be able to have any interviews. I wouldn't be able to write, or I probably, they probably would have killed me by this time, had it not been for all the other marvelous Americans who have passed on. And, and all of them are listed in my book under acknowledgments. There are about 60 of them. None of them were connected really with organizations, interestingly enough, right? These were individualist Americans. Very talented judges, lawyers, doctors, uh, wonderful moms, mostly women, actually. So that is why we are, they wanted to bring us down in 1976 with the Declaration of Interdependence. And they didn't get it. And, and here we are, 2012. Uh, I think there's a tremendous movement right now in the United States, really big time. I don't know whether our numbers are doubled or what, but uh, people are really getting with it. And we're getting the research out. And uh, I think that's why they're moving very fast. Uh, I don't know, personally, uh, if anybody asks me what our likelihood of being able to stop this unbelievable, well-oiled, funded grease machine, I wouldn't say we're very... very and by many. the way, Charlotte, I agree with you. It's a catch-22 for them. We stalled them all those years, you and Ron Paul and Gilbert Griffin back in the 70s, 80s, 90s. I came along in the mid-90s with countless others. And so we stalled them. They got behind the technology developed that they wanted to use to control us. Instead, we hijacked it, the World Wide Web that was going to be worldwide wiretap for them. And so now they're trying to have catch up, but they're in an old paradigm. They're fighting the last propaganda war. And yeah. now they don't understand. They're naked in front of us. The emperor has no clothes. I'm worried about false flag. Now, I want to get your take on that. And, and also, again, give out your websites that we have under you on the lower third so they can go there because that's where the real treasure trove is. And again, get the book at InfoWars.com. And people tend to respect an actual hard copy when you give it to the principal, give it to the teacher. They're compartmentalized. They're, they've been brought up in it. They read this. They're going to recognize everything but never you know, see it from this angle or perspective. Very well written, very powerful, deliberate dumbing down the new revised uh, updated edition at InfoWars.com. But I want you to give out your websites here in a moment, but first I want to pause and play a clip of the now Attorney General in the 90s, Deputy Attorney General, Eric Holder, the guy shipping hand grenades, guns to Mexico to blame the Second Amendment, talking about on C-SPAN how he talked to the media officials up in a big meeting about, quote, brainwashing the public to be anti-gun. Okay, so we're going to play this clip because this illustrates how, in their own words, they see us as a helpless population, they're brainwashing. But once you're aware of the brainwashings going on, no matter how sophisticated it is, you can defeat it. So here's that clip, and I want to get your take. Part of every day, some kind of anti-violence, anti-gun message. Every day, every school, at every level. One thing that I think is clear with young people and with adults as well is that we just have to be repetitive about this. It's not enough to simply have a, a catchy ad on a Monday and then only do it every Monday. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. We also want to uh, have a hotline that we will set up and have the number of that hotline that we just go out there and that would be something that people would have emblazoned in their minds so that All when right. they see it. And again, we played the full clip many times. He says, I met with the media heads. Uh, we're we're going to put out anti-gun messages. It's got to be more intense. And then when we see guns in a house, like in your gun case, you wonder why the plumber comes and cops come later and go, you've got guns. You're like, well, yeah, it's legal. I doesn't matter, sir. we got a report. This is right out of the Soviet Union. So there is the attorney general talking about brainwashing the public against guns. Charlotte? Yeah, well, the more you, you see a lot of this recently, uh, Arne Duncan, you know, the, the Commissioner of Education, he came right out. He's come out several several times on subjects like this, and he's the one that called for, you know, paying students for good grades. So he totally favors the awkward conditioning. And, uh, but, but I, you know, there's an interesting, it's huge, it's called Pedagogy of the Oppressed. Nobody wants to read it, I think. It's by Paulo Freire, a Brazilian educator, a Marxist. 
And they're putting that into the schools. You see, that is where this sort of thing you're talking about, Alex, is coming from. And people might not uh, understand that, that, that Paolo Ferris' philosophy, which is total Marxism, you'll find it mostly in the international baccalaureate programs, but that doesn't mean it's not in all the other global ed programs, too. If your school has global education programs, you have got to go and check them out and demand to see them. But the problem now is, believe it or not, in Maine, we've got computers K through 12, and they're getting rid of all the books in the schools across the country. And I do think that that quote from Dustin Houston that I often use, it's in my books, uh, well, the World Institute for Computer Assisted Teaching is just so scary. Uh, it's hard to believe anybody would say this, but he did it in 1984. He said, won't it be wonderful when the child in the most remote county or country in the world or whatever can have the benefit of the world's top five psychologists on the computer software and nobody you parent, huh? Nobody can get between that child and the curriculum. Now, that's what's coming. I, I plead with you all. What are you going to do first? You have to oppose school choice, all school choice, all except the original one, which is the parent at home or the religious school or the private school that has never accepted a single pay penny of tax money or public school services or computers or anything, even special ed. You know what? If you had a child in public school in kindergarten who was a special ed child, you took him out and you homeschool him, he's still tied in. That's how tied in they get you. Do not accept any of the school choice proposals. And I'll tell you, if you can come up with a school choice proposal that is safe and satisfactory, and you don't agree with me. No strings attached. No strings attached. I will send you $1,000. All right, let me stop you right there, because I've got to bring this up. My children, the two oldest, one is not in, you know, in, in, in school yet, she's four, but the nine-year-old... And then the middle daughter, uh, who's seven, they both are homeschooled. And a few years ago, we said, but it's fun to be part of these homeschool groups, these academies that have campuses and everything where they go twice a week. So they were there last year, and it's Christian, and it's good, and it's accelerated, and they get to have some social stuff, and there's some sports and things. So it's, it's best of both worlds. This year... The standardized testing, because they want to be accredited to get into the school where there'll be no jobs, 53% can't even get a job with their diploma. It's all a hoax. Then my kids bring home Michelle Obama is going to save them, because it's part of being accredited. It's all Department of Education. She's going to tell them what to eat, and they have this food day, Department of Education. Even a pretty much anti-establishment, because most of them are my listeners there, and, and good Christian people still to be accredited because people want to be able to get their kids into college. It's new world order now. I mean, it's everywhere. And so now we're like, okay. I mean, I mean, it, it is incredible. I'm glad you see this, Alex, because what I said before, I want to make it clear. Now, if please, folks, don't don't email me and say that you know of a. Uh, a uh, private Christian school that uh, that isn't controlled by the government. Well, sure, there are plenty that aren't, but they haven't taken any tax money. It's, I want you to send me information about a school that has taken tax money from the government and is not in some way could totally control. You know, even Chester Finn, who's high up with the neocons, and people have heard of him. He was uh, secretary, uh, assistant secretary under uh, Bush. Department of Ed. Way back then, he said, you know, short of throwing money in the streets so everybody can come in and grab a dollar, ten dollars, hundred dollars, whatever, you know, run home. Short of doing that, there is no way for the tax money to be distributed to people or organizations or, or, or what without accountability. And that means, and he said this in the early 80s, the quotes in my book, look, look under Finn, F-I-N-N, 
That means that if you take a penny, pay a penny for the federal government, the state government, your local government, any supplies or services of the school, you are completely controlled. Your child will have to take the national test, which is 60 Hold on, we're going to get into the national test. We're almost out of time. But I want to be clear. From what I've researched, the school isn't taking money, but they want to say they're accredited. And that's the issue, is that just to be accredited, the discrimination against schools that are under government control, then it's not accredited. So, so from what I've researched, they're not taking money, but they want to be accredited. So I think it's even worse than you're saying, but you're the expert. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's true, because accreditation is going to require that you, you have, you know, absolutely no biases, no, everything has to be politically correct. That's why you won't be accredited unless you go through that routine, see? And uh, all I can say is I never dreamed that Charlotte, who had been fighting, which is, I've always known it was the Soviet Union, I've always known it was communism, but I focused on that so much. And, but I never dreamed that I would end up doing a radio show where I'm saying that school choice is the Trojan horse to bring the communist system in. But it is. It is. It allows the total takeover of everything. It allows the total takeover of our representative constitutional form of government by allowing unelected councils Look the word on the dictionary. You'll find it's defined in the old dictionaries as Soviets. Please, folks, I know it's not a really jazzy, exciting subject, school choice, but it sure is dangerous. It's the Trojan horse to lose our free representative form of government, and I will bet my bottom dollar on that. And, you know, it's all going in now. The Chinese system, truly lifelong under the umbrella of the school district. And, Charlotte, let me expand on that. This is powerful information. The school is the heart of every community. And quote after quote by the globalist is how they're going to use it as the metastasization center to spread the cancer. This is Agenda 21, both books, Behind the Green Mask, UN Agenda 21, discount at Rosa Corey, available at Infowars.com. With the deliberate dumbing down of America, revised and abridged edition, Charlotte Thompson uh, Iserby, all available at Infowars.com. Please get it out to everyone you know, because most of the minions of this system are not aware of what they're part of. Charlotte, uh, in the last three or four minutes, we've got any other points you think are important that should be made here? Well, I really don't know. I think that we've the most. The, I'm trying to think of what's important aside from uh, the school choice issue. That that is key. Uh, the other legislation that is being pushed all over the country is the school to work, and and uh, it's the uh, non graded education system. No competition, no nothing. I mean, it's so tragic. And your children aren't going to have any upward mobility. They won't be able to decide what they want to do in their life. You know what I said to my son today, Alex? I said, you know what? I'd rather live with a lot of bums hanging around on the street in town asking for money with a free market system than with the mandated Soviet womb to tomb. You will work at whatever job we decide for you. Cash system. Yes. I would rather have the bums on the street any day, and I'm sick and tired of these neocons and whatever you want to call them, even free market people. You know, I'm, I'm getting very disgusted with their whole philosophy. Well, George Bernard Shaw, the socialist, said you will work at whatever job we give you in the socialist system, and if you don't, we'll kill you. That, you know what? That's exactly what they will do. Well, I mean, Bill Gates is saying kill grandma, hire 10 teachers, and the teachers clap. They think a state that's going to kill grandma is going to give them something. No, they're going to kill you. They're going to kill everybody. It's, you know, Glenn Beck, I don't know if you heard that. Uh, he did a pretty good little clip on his trip to Rome. Did you see it? No, I didn't. <laughs> Where he talked about, he had uh, interviews with people at the Vatican and how the new pope has selected 13 new cardinals. Uh, all very, very conservative. 
And they're so upset in the Vatican. They really are. And, and Glenn Beck, who's, I think he's Mormon, isn't he? Uh, he was really very good. He was very moderate, and uh, people should look that up. He was saying, folks, look, we're all Catholic, really, in the, in the term of big, you know, Christians, huh? Not the, Yeah, the, Catholic the, just means Christian. People don't know that. Then there's right. Roman Catholic means specifically, yeah. That's right. And he said, we, whether you're Methodist, Jewish, whatever, we have to stick together because this is a battle against Lucifer, we are in the last stages. And he said, the Vatican is totally convinced of this now. It took a while. You know, I have a lot of problems with the Vatican because they, they were so surrounded by people who didn't want anybody to figure out what they were doing. But now we do have Benedict, who evidently, as Glenn Beck said, he selected 13 very, very true conservative cardinals because He's, it's, you know, I mean, the, there is no word to describe how concerned he is. Well, you can say what you want about the Vatican, but there's no doubt the liberal Hollywood New World Order establishment is assaulting it 110 percent. I'm not even Catholic, Roman Catholic. But the point is, is that you can see the system is trying to overrun it. And I think the Catholic Church has figured out, the Roman Catholic Church, it tried to work with the system. The system is now trying to fully destroy it because the Luciferians want to destroy all religion to make themselves God. That's, well, you see, that's pretty much what Beck said. You know, he said, oh, if, once the Catholic Church goes down, we all go. <laughs> well, that's like Obama saying the Catholic Church has got to hire, uh, you know, transvestites to teach five-year-olds. Oh, yeah, I know. And th that he talked about Obama, too. Uh, I mean, it really was good. I hope people will look at that because the bottom line here, and I really doubt that I would have spent the past 30 years doing what I'm doing, ending up with this lousy cold. Uh, you know, I'm really sort of addicted to the subject, I guess, but I know something's very wrong. And so I, uh, I myself, you know, I wrote my article, The Devil's Seven Prong Fork. It's on the Internet all over the place, folks. Do read it. Because it'll make you feel a little better, it, it, because it does explain that it, your falling for this wasn't entirely your fault. It's diabolical how they did it with gradualism, the dialectic, mass media control. We're up against total sophistication, but you better know when the mainstream corporate prostitute media pushes something, it's yeah. evil. And whoever they attack may not even be perfect, but they're attacking them because they don't fit into that master plan. That's right, and it's very, very evil right now. And you know, in a way, those who don't have any faith, in, in, you know, in, in Jesus Christ, uh, this is an important time for them because if there's ever, if they're ever going to have evidence that there are two sides to this battle, it's right now. Either you're you're a Christian. Or Jewish, right? If you, you know, that's I, I'm not pushing. I, I'm just saying, either you are Christian or Jewish, or you're with Satan. I mean, you may not know it. I mean, there are a lot of quotes in the Bible that say that. You know, I think Jesus Christ said it. If you're not with me, you're against me. Huh? But there are people who, if they can't see it now, if they can't look what's going on in the schools now in first grade. Look what they're teaching our little children. I mean, it is so sick. I thought this kind of education was sick when they were teaching eighth graders in the 70s these things. Now they're teaching our little ones, our six and seven year olds. Really, how long folks are, I know your audience agrees with this, but how long are we going to allow this to go on? Oh, they're teaching five-year-olds things I didn't know till I was in college. It is purely satanic to try to ruin innocent children. But, again, you know, we've been talking about the, it is satanic. So it is so satanic that the average American will say, well, anything to get away from this. But we need school choice, see? But yeah. instead, the dam breaks and all that evil floods into everything else. Yep. Yeah. So uh, don't let the horrible evil that's so evident uh, let you fall for school choice. Homeschool your children, but don't forget that one of the design teams under George Bush for the New American School Development Corporation was connecting the school district with the homeschoolers, 
Charter schools, let me point this out to you. They have home schools too. And it was through uh, William Bennett who admitted to charter school, uh, to pub, you know, homeschool parents when they said, what test? Mr. Bennett, Secretary Bennett, will our children use with your virtual computer academy? And he said, oh, you have to use the national test. And that's 60% attitudinal, right? You know, so you've got to understand that their whole goal is to control Oh, I heard the news. Yeah, take over homeschools. We're, we're out of time, but I heard the local news. A federal grant of six hundred thousand dollars, our money, to teach the kids about Agenda Twenty One and zero waste and how humans are trash. Right here where I live, we just people put their kids on a government bus, send them right in to be taught how to do things I didn't know about until I was twenty years old, and I wish I didn't know about them then. It is purely satanic. Charlotte Isserby, your book, Deliberate Dumbing Down of America, available at InfoWars.com. Great job. Your website has been below you the entire time. Give us your website one more time and your son's excellent website. Okay. Mine is DeliberateDumbingDown.com, and my son's marvelous one is uh, AmericanDeception.com. And I apologize for my voice, but I'm about to lose it. And, oh, uh, I, think, I think the fact that you've been... You've been under the weather today. You've even been more powerful. Sometimes it is when we don't feel well that we, 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 we rise to the occasion. Charlotte, great job. I'm going to end the show right now and say bye to you here at the end. Stay right there. Thank you so much. Amazing. We'll have you back very soon. Well, there is Charlotte Thompson Isserby. And let me tell you, this is a fight against good and evil. If you don't believe in the devil, that's your issue. Might as well be the devil. Everything I've ever read about in history about devils, goblins, demons, that's the people doing this. Who wants to mess up little kids? Who wants to break up families? Who wants to shut down family farms? Who wants to inject cancer viruses in people? Who wants to shut down local communities and pay $22 billion to ship General Motors to China, Brazil, and Eastern Europe? <laughs> Some evil, sick people. And why do they hate America? For all our faults, we've been the best there is, the most wholesome, the most good, the most free, and we're hated for that. We're fighting pure evil. If you support what we're doing, please get this video out to everybody. If you support Liberty, get it out to everybody. Become a subscriber, 15-day free trial at prisonplanet.tv. Don't just see these shows that we post on YouTube and everywhere else. See it when it first airs, 7 o'clock every night. See the radio show with the video every day. All my films, online books, so much more, prisonplanet.tv. We're in a war. And when people realize we're in a war, that's the beginning of the victory. And that's starting to happen. That's why the enemy is accelerating their program right now. This has been almost an hour-long interview with her. 30 plus minutes with uh, Jim Mars and all the news. Great job to the crew and great job to you, the PrisonPlanet.tv subscribers. Lord willing, I'll see you back on the radio tomorrow, 12 noon Eastern, 11 uh, a.m. Central, and 7 o'clock tomorrow night. We'll have footage from the Ron Paul rally that's going to kick off soon right here in Austin, Texas. I'm Alex Jones, signing off from the front lines of the Info War.